Welcome to the Mindful Healers Podcast with Dr. Jesse Mahoney and Dr. Ni Cheng Lang. We are here to help you learn to pause and be present, awaken your breath, and harness the ripple effects of mindfulness for radiant health. We get you. We know you. We are you. We have both been successful on the surface, yet struggling underneath. We have both had cluttered brains, been overwhelmed, and exhausted. We're healers who have found solutions and want to share them with you. Join us here to discover a better way. Welcome to episode 19. Our next episode in our series on mindful love. Here is a loving mindful reminder that our podcast should not be construed as medical advice. And so as we approach Mother's Day, we are going to spend the next few episodes on mothers, mothering, and Mother's Day. And we acknowledge that not all of you are mothers, but we all have mothers or mother figures in our lives, some with harmonious relationships with us and others with not so harmonious relationships with us. The takeaway that we hope that you'll have today after listening to this episode is that we realize that this episode, that this holiday of Mother's Day can be an invitation for all of you to check in with how you show up for meaningful holidays in general. The intention of today's episode is to share what's possible when you show up for Mother's Day and all other meaningful holidays with mindfulness and intention. We hope that you will discover that you are not at the mercy of how others choose to celebrate you or holidays, that we can show up nourishing ourselves and celebrating ourselves grounded in mindfulness and intention. And when we learn how to do this through much patience and practice, We can create beauty, connection, and love, and a day that you will remember in a positive way, no matter what happens. When we apply the tools of mindful love, though not always easy, it's magical. It's a win-win. When you show up with intention rather than expectation, giving what you most hope to receive, everything feels better. And as we set off on this journey today, I say with the utmost compassion, I know that all of this takes much practice and much patience, kind of like being a mother and having a mother. And so we thought we would be remiss as we are both mothers not to highlight Mother's Day for an episode. And why this episode? Because Mother's Day is a day that often doesn't turn out as well as we expect. And so this year is my 24th Mother's Day as a mom. And last year, my experience of Mother's Day on my 23rd try was the best experience I've had. I felt like I finally figured out how to get it right. And what I mean by getting it right was that at the end of the day, I felt peace, calm, contentment, and happy. Not because it was a perfect day, not because everyone did all the things that I had hoped they would do, or I felt appreciated as a mother, or I had done the perfect job appreciating my own mother, or that our phone call had gone just as I wished, but because I decided that I would take ownership of the day and show up with it for, with mindfulness and attention. And in that spirit, I wrote a blog afterwards because I really had this profound realization about what a different day it turned out to be when I approached it this way. And I wanted to share that here. It was called Figuring Out Mother's Day. This was my 23rd Mother's Day. I am proud to share that this so far has been my best, not because of what anyone else did for me, but because of how I showed up. I have done a lot of work over the last few years on myself through coaching and mindfulness. One of the most powerful and positive impacts has been on my parenting. 
I thought I was a pretty decent parent before, and my kids turned out pretty well. But I also saw parenting as a lot of work. I didn't often pause and enjoy the incredible moments along the way. I spent a lot of time looking ahead and behind, and I had high expectations. Feedback my kids have given me directly recently, clearly implying that perhaps less high expectations might be beneficial. I thought it was my job to influence outcomes, so much of which were totally out of my control. What is different today, me? To start, I have learned to pause and be present for all the moments, the good and the bad. That is where the beauty is. I have stopped trying to fix everything for everyone. I have learned I can only control myself and that I am the only one responsible for my happiness or whether I feel loved or appreciated. I have learned to use my voice to ask for what I want and to share my wisdom, but I am no longer attached to the outcome. I remain perfectly imperfect at all of these new skills, and I am still a work in progress, as we all are. But wow, what a difference these make when I get them right. When I show up for my family with less expectation and not trying to control anything, everyone else starts to show up this way too. When I pause and I'm present in the moment, everything starts to bloom around me. My day yesterday, Mother's Day, included co-teaching yoga with my oldest son for a group of doctors and their children, a trip to the farmer's market with my middle son, family lunch comprised of our bounty, followed by a dog walk in Golden Gate Park. Then my son offered to safely deliver some farmer's market bounty to my mom. So many of us think it is our job as moms to hold everything together, but sometimes letting go reaps even more amazing rewards. After writing that, I got so much feedback that many moms aspire to feel this way, and they wondered how they might be able to experience Mother's Day differently. That's how we came to sharing this episode. We are offering these thoughts on Mother's Day in advance of Mother's Day with the hope that you can all perhaps find peace, calm, and contentment on your Mother's Day, whether you are a mother or have a mother or any other family celebratory day. So as I reflect on last year's Mother's Day and what worked, it strikes me it's the same as what works for marriages and pretty much all of our relationships, showing up with mindfulness and intention. And we've shared this before, pausing and being present for whatever is, being in the moment and enjoying what is. That is where to start. Other tools that were highlighted in that post and that I have found to be tremendously useful are meeting your own needs and wants, nourishing yourself first, dropping expectations of others and expectations of the day itself, accepting and allowing others to be exactly as they are the day to unfold, however it might unfold, and showing up with curiosity instead of judgment, focusing on what's in your control and letting go of what's not. Other favorites, wanting what you have, asking what love would do, asking what peace would do, and looking for amazing These tips all line up with the strategies that I share about mindful love. And what's most beautiful about all of them is that they are all in your control. They are all learned and practiced. And I will offer that they don't come from just listening to a podcast or reading a blog post. They come from engaging in the work, doing the work, and actively managing and training your mind. But the gifts they offer when you figure them out, even if it takes 23 tries, is really magical. So at this point, allowing and accepting that Mother's Days are not rainbows and joyful for everyone. But we'd like to invite all of you to use the day as an opportunity for mindfulness practice. What if you showed up for Mother's Day, regardless of whether or not you celebrate it, 
regardless of whether or not you have some difficulty with the holiday, with some of the tenets and attitudes of mindfulness. So a lot of what you just said, Jesse, encompasses a lot of the foundational aspects of mindfulness. The key one is attention. So at its core, mindfulness is about paying attention. And so attention and simply noticing the day just as it is, so important. Another aspect that you touched upon is acceptance. So reminding us all that we lose 100% of the time when we fight with reality. So what if we just dropped the resistance of what's already here? In doing that, it could empower you to accept circumstances just as they are in the moment. So not a resignation or passivity. In fact, it takes tremendous strength to be able to accept things just as they are in the moment. In doing so, you might find that a response from skillful action can be formed rather than an impulsive automatic reaction. You touched upon curiosity. So a wise mindfulness teacher once told me to use the phrase, how interesting that X, Y, and Z happened. It helped me remind myself of holding a curious lens, especially when things might not be going the way that I had expected. There's much to be curious about if you think about it, regardless of the tone of the circumstance, because technically we have all never lived in this moment ever before, nor will we live it ever again. Right now is a unique moment in time. Non-judgment. So watching how the gaze of curiosity can oftentimes soften the harsh, oftentimes too abrupt judgments that we are trained, many of us as healthcare professionals, to do right off the bat. So very, very quickly we make judgments and missing perhaps the different shades, the subtleties, the intonations of a particular experience. Embodying acceptance and curiosity allows you to be fundamentally less judgmental. Gratitude for Mother's Day is a huge one. Regardless of whether or not you are a mother, you might choose to be grateful for being born. Perhaps sending some gratitude for all mothers in your life, biologic or not. And perhaps sending some gratitude for yourself for your own mothering of other humans and even of fur babies. Maybe even of remothering, reparenting yourself. How interesting is really a cool phrase to try. It's a twist of, of course, because I often think, of course, they showed up that way. But how interesting is a more lighthearted and mindful approach. It doesn't make the assumption that, of course, but it also allows you to let it go. The other thing you mentioned about non-judgment, which seems really powerful, is the space that it creates. So when you are not responding quickly, not reacting, and creating that space, choosing to show up without judgment, really gives you a chance to be intentional and choose the experience of your day. So tell me about um, your experience of Mother's Day and what has worked for you and also perhaps what hasn't. I'd be happy to share. I'm blessed in that I am a mother two times over. I have my AD and BC children, and what those acronyms stand for are my after diagnosis of breast cancer child and my before cancer child. My Mother's Day usually encompasses a nice meal, whether it be brunch or lunch, a visit to the beach for hiking or an outdoor meandering. That's been my kind of classical scheduled Mother's Day. There's usually flowers, and there used to be 
material gifts from my husband, usually a piece of jewelry. But now in the era of COVID, we're more in a purging mindset and we prioritize special experiences as opposed to material objects. So this last year has definitely made me all the more mindful about consumerism and how major holidays tempt us to get real back into the consumerism. So that's another opportunity to practice mindfulness. If I am with family, like with my own mother or my sister-in-law, I'm mindful of their experience of the holiday as well. So there is a, a joyful generosity that I get to create an experience for them, with them as well. Uh, and oftentimes it's that they're also present in the celebrations of my Mother's Day. I will say though that my favorite gifts are those made by my daughters. My very first Mother's Day present was a painting of a butterfly, but this butterfly was made of the footprints of my now eldest daughter. So I cherish that so much. Uh, my next favorite Mother's Day gift is a handmade bookmark that I also use a lot. Thank goodness it's laminated. Those are really my favorite Mother's Day presents that I have to this day. I am delighted that you brought mindful minimalism into the conversation about holidays and consumerism. And it gets to the expectation. And not that there's anything wrong with it. In fact, it's lovely to receive a gift and give a gift, but to realize all of the other stuff that comes with Mother's Day. And this podcast came about because of my own expectations of Mother's Day. I didn't actually have expectations of gifts, but I had expectations perhaps of what other people should do to acknowledge or appreciate me. And learning that I don't need any gifts for that and that it really can come from my own thoughts and from my own choice of how to experience the day has been really powerful. And what if you could enjoy Mother's Day without the consumerism? And I'm thinking back to my favorite Mother's Day gifts. They are all of the um, cards and art projects that my kids made in nursery school. Those are the ones that I have saved um, in treasured boxes. Not all of them, but the ones that really um, spoke to me. And realizing that years from now, what will you wish that you had done on Mother's Day? And what will you wish that you had saved? And what will you wish that you had spent money on? And being intentional about that. Given that we're in Earth Week, Earth Month, I like to think of April, as also thinking about as mothers, what do, gifts do we want to give to our children? And what value from Mother's Day going forward? How can we create a celebration of mothers that honors our biggest mother, Mother Earth? So I wanted to talk a little bit about showing up with intention rather than expectation. And that is because what I saw that got in the way of my happiness of my own Mother's Day, and not just for me, but for so, so many other people, is this idea of expectation. And what if we showed up with intention instead? And so I thought I would look at how I intend to show up for this Mother's Day, and we'll see how it goes. I promise it won't go perfectly, but... I plan to explore and practice along the way. So my guiding words for this year were abundance, love, grounded, and proud. And interestingly, as I thought about how I wanted to show up for Mother's Day, those words popped up. And I thought these could actually be kind of tenets of mindful love. And they're perfect for how to approach Mother's Day or a holiday or Father's Day or um, birthdays and such. So coming from a place of abundance, noticing, enjoying, and appreciating all that is. Choosing to look for what's right and what's working. 
choosing to notice and enjoy love, even if it doesn't look like I think it should. Also knowing from a place of abundance that my own mom did the best she could with the skills she has and the human being that she is. And appreciating that I have done the same for my children, done the best that I could with the skills and humanness that I showed up with. Realizing that we have an abundance of future opportunity. Our relationships are long. And even for those of us whose mothers are no longer here, we still have a relationship with them. And at any point, we can shift and change and pivot. And at any point, we can choose how we want to show up with love and choose to create more love. So thinking that we can kind of show up with the glass half full versus half empty, or As Charlie Mackesy says in his book, The Boy, the Fox, the Mole, and the Horse, we can just be grateful that we have a glass at all. Tapping back into the tenant of mindfulness, that of gratitude. So I also plan to show up for this Mother's Day grounded. Grounded to me means trusting in myself and in others and in that the day is going to turn out beautifully no matter how it turns out, no matter how messy it is. And realizing that when I show up grounded, I show up with less expectation, not trying to control anything. And when I do that, everyone else shows up that way too. It helps me to not be in my head. And when I'm showing up grounded, I'm really truly showing up from my heart. And I find that's tapping into the what would love do again. And even the hand to heart exercise, if you are in a moment of your day with others, and it may be not going as you expect, hand to heart and just tapping back into what love would do is a grounded approach. Love was my third Um, guiding word for 2021, and it will be my third guiding word for Mother's Day, realizing that love would relish Mother's Day. It would savor all of it and enjoy it and let it all in, whatever it turns out to look like. Um, It's a day for me to love others, love all of those that I mother exactly as they are, and a day for me to love and appreciate my mother and any other mother figures who happen to be in my life or who happen to have been in my life. It's also a day to love myself as a mother and appreciate that side of me and all that I have put there, all the energy, time, love that I have put into that role. And to realize that all of those things happen exactly as they are messy, beautiful, perfect, imperfect, all of the above. The last guiding word that I'm going to bring to my intentional and mindful Mother's Day is proud. And it seems an unusual way to show up for a day. And yet it has been my most most um, word most tied into personal growth. Because when you're proud, you are grounded and you are trusted. And If you show up proud as both a mother and a daughter, you show up from a place of strength and empowerment and calm and presence that's very different than when you're not proud. It's also showing up in a way that your future self would be proud. And I love checking in with a future self version. So a future self of you that was proud and thought that was a beautiful, nourishing, loving day and I got it right and I enjoyed my children and I enjoyed my mother and I enjoyed my family and I enjoyed a beautiful May day. So I embark on all this knowing that it won't be perfect and I won't get it right, but that I will have um, compassion and understanding (laughs) and forgiveness when I don't and compassion and understanding and forgiveness for everyone else. Realizing that the day will be exactly as it's supposed to be and that I will get to keep practicing next year, no matter what. As usual, we wanted to end with some reflection questions. 
How will you wish you had shown up for your Mother's Day this year? How do you want to show up for Mother's Day? And frankly, any holiday that matters to you, like your birthday. Are there any barriers to how you want to show up? And what if you became curious about why those barriers exist? What were the guiding words that you potentially chose for this year? And how can you apply them to Mother's Day and every day? So that is all for today as we reflect on the upcoming Mother's Day. We hope you'll stay tuned next week for a discussion about using mindfulness and intention to improve your relationship with your own mother. And a mindful reminder that there is one spot left in my yoga and coaching retreat in Central California on the coast at the end of May. And that last spot is waiting for just one of you who wants to emerge from this pandemic with intention and mindfulness. And for anyone who feels inspired to work on their relationships after learning more about approaching love mindfully, I would love to have any of you join me for my coaching program called Mindful Love, which will start again in June. Registration is open and the spots are limited. So thank you all for listening to us today. We are grateful for all of our followers and subscribers, and we would love it if you could leave us some personal reviews. The feedback feels amazing and inspires us to keep sharing this type of content with you. Please stay on after the singing bowl for a loving kindness meditation offered by Dr. Ni Chang Liang, our gift to you. As always, if you want to declutter your mind, be more present, and start truly living your one wild and precious life, Come find us at the mindfulhealerspodcast.com. Work with one of us. Work with both of us. Start or up-level your mindfulness practice. Discover how mindful coaching can change your life. Or even better, do both as part of our Mindful Healers programs and retreats. You can find links to find out more about our programs and join our communities at the mindfulhealerspodcast.com. Reach out and get started on your journey to a life better lived today. The content of this podcast is not meant to be medical or life advice. If you choose to participate in our mindful moments, please do so safely. Welcome to our mindful moment of loving kindness. I invite you to participate with me in a safe location, inviting you to sit in a position of comfort, closing eyes or lowering your gaze a few inches in front of you. Noticing the point of contact between you and the environment perhaps noticing the sensations of the ground beneath your feet, the support of a chair. And inviting both hands to be gently clasped upon your heart, applying some gentle pressure Noticing the sensations of this gently applied pressure atop your chest. And repeating to yourself the following kind intentions. First, bringing up to your mind's eye, yourself, 
or the felt presence of self. May I be well. May I find peace. May I be happy. May I be free from harm. May I be well. May I find peace. May I be happy. May I be free from harm. May I be well. May I find peace. May I be happy. May I be free from harm. And expanding to include your mother or a mother figure in your life and wishing those same kind intentions to her. May you be well. May you find peace. May you be happy. May you be free from harm. May you be well. May you find peace. May you be happy. May you be free from harm. May you be well. May you find peace. May you be happy. May you be free from harm. And as you're ready, inviting a broadening of those kind intentions to encompass all mothers and mother figures everywhere. And perhaps including yourself if you happen to be in that particular role or have in some ways remothered or even reparented some aspect of you. May we be well. May we find peace. May we be happy. May we be free from harm. May we be well. May we find peace. May we be happy. May we be free from harm. May we be well. May we find peace. May we be happy. May we be free from harm. Sitting for a moment with those kind intentions for yourself, for mothers and mother figures of the world. Noticing what's arising for you right now. And inviting you to bring your hands down into your lap or atop your knees. Coming back to the felt sensation of the support of whatever it is that you've chosen to sit upon. Blinking open eyes and letting the light back in. Checking in to notice what's here right now. After that loving kindness practice. Thanks for practicing. <laughs>